prior to coming to Kip, I tried to do a fishbowl discussion and it, and it failed. And I had the kind of vague idea of how to do it, but I didn't have these specific tools. When I got to Kip last year, we had a really good professional development on Socratic seminars that really showed me kind of the little tricks that made it work. My name is Kellen McNulty and I teach 10th grade AP World History and 11th grade AP US History at Kip Kane Collegiate. I think the hardest thing for teachers in adapting a critical thinking model is that it requires them to kind of step back and let the students do all the work. And I think for a teacher who's used to being the agent of knowledge, it can be hard for them to take a back seat to the learning that's happening in the classroom. My name is Katie Kirkpatrick and I'm the Dean of Instruction at Kip King Collegiate High School. I also teach ninth grade speech and composition. Another thing that I started doing at Kip is using like very specific structures to push students to critical thought. And the biggest impact has been the um, Socratic seminar rubric. Last year before I started teaching at Kip, we went through a lot of professional development and one of the most useful um, sessions was on these Socratic seminars. To set up my classroom for the Socratic seminar, I basically move the desks into a square in the middle of the room and 12 students sit there. And then outside of that square, I have the desks surrounding it into a larger square and 12 you know, to 14 students sit on the outside. Many teachers know this as a, a fishbowl and the rubric asks the person on the outer circle to grade them on did they use the text to support their arguments? Did they use analytical language? And it gives examples of analytical language. Did they um, make a connection to what someone else was saying in the discussion, right? Did they um, agree or disagree with someone else? So if you wanna do this in your classroom, like it's really important that you actually seat them in a way that's conducive and you maybe sit down yourself or you even take yourself out of the um, discussion because if you're just standing up there normally like they might not be able to have a discussion like you want. During PD last year I learned how to set up the room like that and how to use that rubric and the different jobs that you can give people on the outside to stay motivated and invested and paying attention. To keep your kids engaged these kids who are in the center or you who are in the center you're always going to have a role right? If you're a student you're a participant or you're a teacher facilitator. And those are the only roles that are available to the inside. But the outside, you don't want to just let them sit there. They need an active role and they need a role that um, helps them really follow what's going on. So here are the roles that you might assign to people who are on the outside. You might tell, okay, you're a reporter and you can have multiple reporters. In fact, it's really interesting to have multiple reporters because sometimes they see things differently and they report out different things. You're a silent contributor. I really love this role. So like they follow on as if they were in the conversation, but they're not in it. And at the end, you get the chance to say to them, what would you have said? And then the shadower. And when you're a shadower, you're directly assigned to a student in the inner circle. So your job, is to see that she speak loudly and clearly, that she give reasons and evidence for our statements, that she use the text, that she paraphrase accurately. Typically, once students get used to this, they do very well with it. The thing that's compelling about this specific model is that it, it shows up everywhere. You know, so how is it that you can convince your mom to buy you a cell phone? How are you going to convince a college to accept you? I mean. Those situations require critical thinking um, and argumentation skills, and we all use them in our daily lives so frequently. 